He has spent his entire career with the Arvada Police Department, moving up the ranks over the past 29 years, and now takes over the top spot. Say hello to the new chief. I'm here with Ed Brady, who has recently been appointed as the new chief of police for the city of Arvada. Ed, thanks for having us out here in the command vehicle. Oh, thanks for coming out. It's, uh, it's a wonderful vehicle that we have, and I'm sure glad we're inside on this very cold day. Ed, tell me a little bit about how you use this equipment. Yeah, so this is our police incident command van. So we use it in a couple ways. The first is any major critical incidents. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we had a few shootings over the last year that we've been able to bring it out on. Uh, we had an incident involving uh, where we had to get the bomb squad out, so we brought it out on that. Um, we make this asset available to any other uh, agency or the fire department should they need it. Uh, it's very... It's a very good asset to have for extended situations or critical incidents. But we also use it for um, community events. Uh, we used it at the 4th of July, and it's very nice uh, to be able to have our operations center in here. Ed, how, did, how was this paid for? Yeah, we paid for this through uh, drug seizure money. And so this was about uh, $750,000 that we were able to use uh, through some combined seizure money that we had. So this didn't come out of any of our taxpayer dollars. It's nice to see that uh, crime doesn't pay and that, in fact, it pays for the equipment we need to have. Yeah, absolutely. It, uh, as I said, it's a very good asset to have when those big situations arise. And talk a little bit about your career with the Arvada Police Department. Yeah, I've been blessed. I've come up through the Arvada Police Department since 1994. I just started out as a patrol officer, loving uh, my job. Uh, I went to the West Metro Drug Task Force in 1999 and then got promoted to sergeant in about 2003. Uh, spent some time in admin and patrol as an admin sergeant, and then I became a commander in 2007, again on patrol and admin. And then I've been a deputy chief since 2014 until Chief Strait retired in December of 2022, and I was appointed uh, the new chief then. We all know it's been a difficult time to be a police officer between the national dialogue and certainly the, the sadness that we've had in our community losing two officers over a 15-month period. What do you tell our officers in the community about our de police department? Yeah, this has been the most difficult period of policing in my 29 years. Uh, Chief Strait had the four of the most difficult with the loss of Gordon and Dylan, and then the national narrative, uh, which hasn't been in favor of the police. But we've been very fortunate here in Arvada to have the support of the council, uh, the community. And so I try to let our officers know that all the time, that uh, we provide them with the best training, um, excellent leadership and just the people here in our agency that make us so good and then we get to go out every day and police a wonderful community so we're very fortunate compared to other agencies throughout the nation but we put a lot of work into that ed we're one of the highest accredited law enforcement agencies in the country is that right that's right so we became an accredited agency through CALEA and that's the commission on accreditation for law enforcement agencies we were the first agency in the state to become accredited in the mid 1980s 1986 I believe and the 13th nationally and we've always uh, maintained our accreditation ever since uh, accreditation really provides us the ability to maintain our best practices and procedures, making sure our policies are up to date so that we don't become stagnant in our practices. Every four years or so, an assessment team will come out. Uh, they'll interview people, look at our policies uh, to make sure that we're still in alignment with what we say we do. And I think we've been involved in anti-bias training with our police department way before it became the national norm. Absolutely. So one of the things about accreditation is it requires us to have policies in regards to that. So for the last 20 plus years, every year we have anti-bias training that we've provided to our officers. Uh, we also do things like we look at our uses of force and tickets and arrests to see if we're disproportionately arresting or ticketing any segment of society to make sure that we're not out of alignment there. Uh, we even go further and look at our recruiting efforts to make sure that our department mirrors the community that we serve and so we look at a um, you know the race and ethnicity of our employees to see if we're short in any area and if we are then we just try to improve our recruiting efforts in those areas so that we can increase uh, the applicant pool um, to select qualified candidates from areas that we might not be doing. An applicant goes through a rigorous process to become a police officer in Arvada. They'll undergo a written tests, uh, oral interview, uh, polygraph, psychological test, uh, background investigation, 
And so we may get a lot of applicants, but really only a small percentage of that is qualified to be a Nevada police officer. Ed, as you take in your expertise and, and take on this new role, what kind of things do you want to do with our police department? Yeah, so uh, top priority for us internally is to get up to staff. Uh, we have about 31 vacancies internally, and so we want to be able to fill those vacancies so we can better protect this community. That's, that's number one on my agenda to try to uh, get there. Um, I've always been a big fan of the sector of policing uh, model that Chief Wick put into place back in 2014. And so we will uh, carry on with that so that our sector commanders who know their areas can really implement strategies to impact crime and quality of life issues and traffic issues in those areas. Ed, being, again, being an officer is tough, particularly in these times, and it takes a lot of family support. Oh, yeah. Tell us a little bit about your family and, and uh, what makes you tick. Yeah, thanks. So my wife Kathleen and I have been married 30 years. Uh, we have four children, ages 24 to 15. Uh, we recently became grandparents back in September. So uh, we have a little grandson named Charles. And, you know, the families live this profession with us. Um, when we go out on the road or, or when somebody in our profession gets hurt, they live that with us. And so it's not easy to be um, married to a police officer. Uh, so I'm just very grateful that I have that family support there and um, I'm just very proud of all my children. Well, Ed, we are absolutely thrilled to have you as our chief of police. We Thank you. wish you every success, many years of continued service to this incredible community. Well, thank, thank you, you Mayor.